Shalom, Shalom, Holy Chevra. I'm here with Rabbi Michael Lerner, who is the editor of Tikkun and has written 11 books and most recently, Revolutionary Love, a manifesto on how to heal and transform the world. So thank you for taking time to talk. Delighted to be with you. So I want to think about this environmental crisis. Um, I know you're very passionate about this. It's a very, very serious issue. And do you think this is an issue we should be talking about in shul, in, in our synagogues, in our Jewish institutions? Absolutely. The um, saving the planet from destruction is uh, one of the first things that was commanded us in Torah. You know, you know, avdol l'shamro, yeah. to, work, to work it and protect it. And we have been doing as a Jewish people and as a um, part of the world's uh, population a lousy job doing that. On the contrary, we are in a position now where the life support system of the planet is in deep danger. And the scientists, um, thousands and thousands of scientists um, who are quoted at the beginning of my book, Revolutionary Love, um, say um, that we need fundamental transformation of our society, yeah. including amongst the, those transformations, uh, the uh, reduction of eating animals for, and, the, um, uh, and um, the stopping of growth as the central um, mm -hmm. central belief system of, uh, of the contemporary eco global economy that uh, uh, an economy is doing well when it grows and grows and grows. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, while it's growing and growing and growing, it's taking more and more and more out of the earth and much of it for the sake of, not of basic human needs, but for the sake of making profit for some people by by generating needs in people that they didn't have as human beings, yeah. but that they, they get by being indoctrinated by our media and uh, in many other ways to feeling that they need more and more consumer goods, a new computer every two or three years, a new handheld uh, phone every few years, mm -hmm. uh, and many, many other things that, that end up being junk that's thrown into uh, into our oceans mm -hmm. or or polluting our air or polluting our ground. So uh, growth is uh, has to be stopped and yet it's central to the whole uh, discourse of and the whole belief system of a capitalist system so i can see why synagogues don't want to touch this or in jewish institutions um because they, it's cute to say let's change our light bulbs or have a little film night or something like this but to actually examine the environmental crisis means to question the entire economic infrastructure that we're engaged with the entire capitalistic enterprise exactly. and that would be um that would be very bold so, so how, do we, how, how do our institutions break through that barrier? Well, I think we have to talk about it. We have to preach about it. Yeah. Um, rabbis should be taking the leadership in this, um, but they're scared to do that. Right. They're fine with going to a demonstration. Right. They're fine with um, signing a petition. Right. But in terms of in your own congregation, mm -hmm. where there are people who are making their money um, uh, out of uh, the... The, the products that destroy the earth, mm -hmm. um, it's very scary yeah. for people to do. Right. And I think that we need to provide support for rabbis to be able to do that. Yeah. At the same time, we need to challenge rabbis yeah. and other Jewish leaders to take a leadership role in this issue and not simply a, a um, leadership at the level of uh, protesting, but at, at the level of putting forward a whole new vision of what an economy could be like yeah. and what a uh, political system could be like that had a new bottom line. The old bottom line is uh, money and power. Everything is judged efficient, rational, and productive to the extent that it maximizes money and power. Um, we are saying, in, both in, in this book and in the movement that Tikkun is trying to create, that we're calling a love and justice movement, mm -hmm that we need a new bottom line, and that that new bottom line is this, that every institution, corporation, government policy, our economic system, our, uh, our legal system, our uh, educational system, our cultural system, should all be judged efficient, rational, and productive to the extent that they maximize love and caring, kindness and generosity, 
ethical and environmental sensitivity and behavior, yeah. enhance our capacity to respond to other human beings as embodiments of the sacred rather than as something mm -hmm. that should, uh, should be valued only to the extent that they can do something for us, mm -hmm. and responding to the earth with awe and wonder and radical amazement, mm -hmm. in the words of my teacher, A.J. Hessel, yeah. um, rather than simply looking at it from the standpoint of, is there something here I can turn into a product and sell and make a buck? Yeah, great, great. So what is the grassroots spiritual or educational work involved in here? You've already started to touch on it. It's clear the legislative uh, changes to rein in that bottom line. But on the level of modeling and living these virtues that we're seeking to pursue, there's a lot of fear to have such a shift people would be very afraid about the economic state or about losing money, whatever the case is. Like, how do we, how, how do we as spiritual leaders help to move that forward? Well, first of all, we have to believe it ourselves, yeah, right? right. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and uh, that's a big step yeah. because um, um, basically the first response um, of everyone when they hear this is, what a beautiful idea. Yeah. Second response is, and it's totally unrealistic. It'll never happen. Mm -hmm. So don't waste your time on that. Yeah. And um, so we have to begin to remind people that every significant change that's happened in the yeah. past 60 years right. has happened uh, despite the fact that those who started, it, started a movement yeah. were told that what they wanted was unrealistic, whether yeah. that's regard to the civil rights movement, the women's movement, the LGBTQ movement, um, the end of apartheid in South Africa, the right of gays to marry. Every one of them was told Forget it, it'll never happen, etc. So we have to convince our yeah. rabbis to say a very important message. Yeah. Don't be realistic. Don't be realistic. Yeah. Instead, yeah. recognize that to believe in God yeah. is to believe that there is a force in the universe yeah. that makes possible the transformation from that which is to that which ought to be. Yeah. Um, or as God, uh, God says, um, when Moses is pressing him for the answer to who, what will I tell Pharaoh about who your name is? And God says, I will be what I will be, which actually means I am not part of the furniture yes. of the universe. I am right. the possibility yeah. of what can be in the universe. Right. Right. I am that which makes transformation happen. Mm -hmm. To believe in God, to yeah. believe that there is that force in the universe right. is the thing that is hardest for our rabbis yes. as well as for as well as for our lay people to yeah. actually get that there is a force in the universe that makes possible yeah. the fundamental transformations that otherwise are dismissed as yeah. unrealistic and impossible. Love it. Oh, that's very inspiring, and I think uh, it's very easy to study all the Jewish texts but never actually absorb that central Jewish spirit of the role of Klal Yisrael in the world to represent and uh, you know in allyship with other groups to represent God's vision for becoming, for potentiality. That's so, exactly yeah. what I want to see Jews doing. I yeah. think Jews should be taking the vanguard yeah. in the struggle to save the planet. Yeah. But that means the vanguard to transform what is seen as realistic and to uh, and to go for right. a world that is actually sustainable. Yeah, yeah. So as a student of Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, um, you know, at JTS in, in some many decades ago, um, what what about that experience or learning with him continues to uh, to walk with you? Well, what walks with me most is uh, the combination of taking uh, God seriously at the spiritual level oh. and com combining that mm. with taking God seriously in the social level. Mm. So um, that that part is usually divided, and even um, I see this in many groups that are now trying to make their synagogue more spiritual, mm -hmm. but they translate that as to, but we don't want to talk about politics, we don't mm -hmm. want to talk about what's going on in the world, well, yeah. let's just nourish our own soul. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm all for nourishing one's own right. soul, right. but what Heschel did was to focus on the inter, uh, intrinsic interrelationship between these two, mm -hmm. that one needs to both develop one's own self and spiritual life and um, not be dead in synagogue, not go there hoping that it'll be over quickly so that we can get to the Kiddush. Right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but, right. But, um, um, but he also says that, it's a, that um, it is totally um, a mistake to, um, to be only into prayer mm -hmm. while closing one's eyes to the suffering. 
Now, he said at that time the suffering of other human beings, but I know for sure that, <coughs> that his consciousness yeah. would have led him also to say for the suffering of the planet. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Um, friends, be sure to check out this new book, Revolutionary Love. Check out Rabbi Lerner's uh, books and other works. And um, uh, we'll see two more recordings coming up soon.